slash weekly program if you just want to gather in so I don't have to shout as far. Welcome, thanks for coming out on this beautiful morning and thanks for finding the library too. I know it's a little bit different than our normal Schmeekly programs, but welcome. Uh, so today we'll go around and look at some of the murals that are down here and learn a little bit about the history and why these murals are here. So Stevens Point uh, has changed a lot since the beginning. Uh, Main Street used to be filled with horses, now it's filled with cars. The ground, the, the street itself used to be filled with dirt, now it's uh, pavement. Uh, a lot of these uh, businesses have changed hands, changed names, locations throughout the time. Uh, but one of the things that really remains constant here in Stevens Point is community um, and that feeling that everyone's connected and works together here. How many people are from Stevens Point? Originally, you're like yep, yep. over 20 years at least. <laughs> Perfect. Born, born Great. Here. So, uh, my name is Emma. I'm a practicum student here. So, I am studying at the university, studying environmental education and interpretation. Um, so, I've only lived in Stevens Point for four years, uh, but I've done a lot of research. But I also like to uh, ask your help throughout the walk. If you have lived here for a little bit longer, um, for maybe some of your input and insight as well. We'll just walk on over to our first mural over here. For the 150th anniversary of Stevens Point back in 2008. Yeah, so uh, most of the historic murals that we will see, or all the historic murals that we will see, uh, were formed as a, there's a commission that was formed. Uh, before the 150th anniversary to make these murals. Uh, this one was in celebration of that, and it goes through some history of Stevens Point. Uh, most of the historic ones that we will see were done by Kelly Meredith, a woman from Butternut, Wisconsin, with the help of other locals. And there's one other historic one done by another artist. But these ones specifically were done on the cut out wood on different slabs to make give it a little dimension, um, also to make it easier to put up. Um, but I wanted to start telling you uh, a little bit of a story as we walk through this mural. So I'll be walking down kind of slow, so if we all can just like move really slow. I wish we had one of those little escalator, <laughs> flat escalator things that would really help, but we don't, so you'll have to use your feet. Uh, so back in 1853, a young man was looking for work, so he came up the Wisconsin River. He landed upon Stevens Point, named after George Stevens, who started um, the area with a little lumber shack to help keep store his supplies um, for his lumber mill up in Wausau. Uh, so this man who came up here found himself working for the lumber industry as a river rat. Uh, I have a pretty neat picture that I can pass around um, this is just north of Stevens Point, so not quite here, but shows some uh, people working on the river. As a river rat, he spent his days pushing and moving logs that got stuck on the shore at rapids in the sun, the rain, and the snow. Then one day, to his great pleasure, and many of his co-workers, <laughs> the Point Brewery opened. Um, it was a great place to hang out after work, you grab a pint, gather with friends on the weekends or whatever days you actually get to have off as a loser or a burger rat. So around this point, hundreds of Polish immigrants started moving in. Is anyone Polish here? Yeah. So in this area, there's quite a lot of um, Polish influence, and that's because many of them landed here. I do want to mention Madonna Hale List. This is a quite an interesting woman. She was the first school teacher here in Stevens Point. When she moved here, she was one of 15 women in between Clover and Wausau. So you can imagine that it might have been a little bit difficult um, here as one of the first women. Her daughter was actually the first white girl born um, in the county. She had that private school and worked there for about two years. Soon more women started to come, but she was one of the first. So this is the schoolhouse. Is it still standing? It's not still standing. 
Yeah. 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 Y
I uh, how do you think about your favorite business? Does anyone want to share one of their favorite businesses? The Main Grain Bakery. Main Grain Bakery. Emmy Jays. Emmy Jays. Polito's. Polito. Yeah. Now or years ago? Yeah. <laughs> what, years ago? What, years ago? Well, the bakery down here. The bakery, yeah. Oh, yes. The Point the Bakery. Point bakery. Oh, yes. The library. Toyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Point Bakery. Awesome. Yeah. Those are, yeah, those are, yeah, those are next all market. The library. Which, this one? Which version? Uh -huh. so, yeah, those are some first, really great businesses one, and some man. that I have heard about and wish I was able to experience. Uh, but one of the first businesses that opened up uh, downtown was actually a saloon. Surprise. Believe it or not, <laughs> it was a saloon. Uh, and saloons have always been a really important part of the area. Um, we don't tend not to call them saloons anymore, but more bars, grills, pubs, those sorts of things. Uh, the first saloon was actually opened in 1845 um, by Mateus Mitchell. Uh, it was called the Rasmus House, and it was um, over in that direction a little bit. It's no longer here. Um, but he was a man that owned most of Main Square, or the Square and Main Street, and opened up the saloon for travelers uh, and people working with the mills and as lumberjacks and those sorts of things. Now this building uh, was originally a saloon as well. It wasn't originally graffiti's, um, but it opened up in the 1890s. Um, these two murals are of the owners of the current bar that is in there. Um, so it's owned by two families and each one depicts a different family of the other one. Um, so this, the building opened in 1890 was a saloon, passed through different saloons, um, closed and was a sports shop, closed again, and then in 1994 opened up as graffiti's is what it currently is. It was a supermarket. It was a supermarket yeah. too? Okay. Before it became, you know, like the sports shop. Before the sports shop. Okay. Yeah, so it's changed hands a little bit. Are these real faces of the family? Yeah, so it's real faces. Um, the artist looked at different pictures. Um, it's not the dress period of the family. <laughs> uh, it's from the 1930s and the 1800s. Um, but the faces are based off of pictures that the family gave to the artist. It's also another built-in, it's not on the wall. So these, uh, the commission calls windows into the past, so they're just um, wooden blocks that are then painted and brought in. Is there some way you can find out who the actual people are? I mean, I know like the big one, there yeah. you can. I get that. Um, I have not been able, I did, was not able to find this information. I'm sure if you contacted the owners, they would let you know, because it is just their family, so okay. I'm sure they are well aware. Um, yeah, but these ones don't have like the information like that one does. Uh, if you guys just want to take a peek around the corner, we've got those two roosters over there. Uh, back in the 1970s, there was an artist that tried to uh, paint some murals in the Polish folk art um, scheme and was hoping to get um, other ethnicities to paint folk art of their uh, ethnic background. Uh, didn't quite catch, but we have some a few examples. We'll just head on over to this next one. So we've got, that's a Polish. The roost is a Polish. Yeah. Kind of a symbol, right? Well, it's kind of the paper cutting that they yeah. did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Even the egg Yeah, so it's the, right, the, the style of the, the artist. The I don't know if anyone still has those other images or if they still need to be passed around, but I can take them over. Uh, so this mural um, has 124 faces on it and one dog. They're all <laughs> people who uh, were once, were are currently living in Stevens Point. We have faces from 1900 up until about 2006 uh, when this mural was starting to be commissioned. Uh, you could donate money and pay for a face of a family member, a community member, someone that was important to you. Uh, here's the original picture that it was based on. So this is the square right behind you back in 1910. Uh, you can see that it looks a little different than it does now. A lot more horses, uh, some hay, a few more people than you might see on a normal day. Uh, but does anyone know any faces on here? 
husband's yeah. on the corner. Your husband's on the corner. Yeah. Preaching to the group. Oh, that's nice. great. <laughs> <laughs> that's really fun. Yeah, here's the dog real quick. I think that was oh. just fun to point out because oh, it's something so a little different on there. Uh, but it, it ranges from doctors, firefighters, lawyers, teachers, wives, uh, the whole shebang, anything. Anything that you can think of, you can probably find. And if you are interested in finding more about them, because I don't have them all memorized, uh, you can find their names uh, online on Stevens Point, uh, Stevens Point's website. Just like look up murals uh, and some of the uh, archival uh, newspapers have a little bit more detail on each of them as well. So this one was, this mural was a little bit more difficult to complete. Um, it is on the wall, but as you can see, it's not a smooth surface. Um, and it, there's different textures as well. So you can kind of see like the covered up windows up top are a smooth surface. Um, and then there's a corner. So uh, factoring in all these curves and ends and bumps so that it does look correct and proportional was a little bit difficult. Uh, it was completed in 2006, and it wanted to be done before the Jatzinski, if I'm saying that correct, I think so, <laughs> um, harvest, or festival. Um, so Jatzinski is the, a Polish harvest festival, and Stevens Point, we celebrate it every year um, towards the end of August. Um, there's dances and gatherings and food. Um, and so this was part of that celebration. Yeah, so we'll just go around the corner a little bit and look at some more. Yeah, yeah, the bottom. Have you seen this? Yeah. We've lost our continuity. Yeah, so it continues on a little bit. Um, so who goes to the farmer's market? in this summer, springtime, fall, and it's nice in a few, a few weeks. I think it So the Market Square used to, uh, has always been that gathering place for farmers to come and share um, their goods. Uh, obviously in the 19, or 1910, from that picture, is a little bit uh, bigger than the farmer's market today. Uh, it was a great gathering place for people to come and just meet up with their friends as well. Uh, one of the difficult things for immigrants when they came over was losing that sense of community. Uh, farms were a lot smaller and closer knit <laughs> over in Europe. As you can imagine, Europe's a little bit smaller, a little more dense, especially uh, back in like the 1800s, early 1900s, uh, than central Wisconsin is. Farms are a lot larger, more spread out. So getting a chance to come meet in a centralized location was very helpful. Uh, our fountain that's in the middle kind of represents uh, in the uh, early 18 or the late 1800s uh, early 1900s that's where the horse water troughs would be so you'd have to bring your horse in to carry your goods and your family in and that was a place for the horses to drink also in the center of the square uh, was the first light pole um, so that when we first got electricity that was where the first one stood um, and a few different statues as well has been there, but now we have the fountain. Uh, the square and the main street as well, uh, first was covered with dirt, and then at one point was filled with cedar blocks, so they laid down um, long flies of wood to go down, which is a lot uh, less messy, less dirty. Um, it worked fairly well, but once pavement was cheap and available uh, that came in, which helped bring in more buggy and carts and then cars eventually. So, uh, I don't think we can quite go back to dirt. I don't think that would work very well and people would want to come to farmers so. so our next stop is just around the corner. We will have to cross the street a little bit but it is um, a large staple. Uh, I don't remember this door. Was this door put in? It's, I think it took away from some of the people, the individuals that were here. Because that was originally yeah. there. Right, in terms of part of what happened. Yeah, yeah. It was part of the lady that was in here. Yes. This is the new Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised they didn't put it on, on the front of the door. 
I, I think it's it's a fairly new door. Can't really right. Dance for right. It's really clean. Maybe so that's still, that might be maybe stuff it'll be too. coming up too. Yeah, I'm sure it's some fire code yeah. stuff going on. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> to celebrate the 160th anniversary of Point Brewing uh, done by Nick Gedding. I have here, oh that's the lumber room, an image of Point Brewing, Brewing Company uh, back in 1857. I'll pass that around as well. Uh, so you can see that this mural shows everything that goes into um, kinds of beer. So we've got the hops, the water, and the barley or the wood. Uh, so Point Brewery and Three Portage County helped hire Nick to paint this. Does anyone know what happened to, um, and I guess during the Prohibition, how Point Brewery stayed alive? They drank beer and soda. Yeah, so um, they made non-alcoholic stuff to continue. So um, during the Prohibition, a lot of businesses uh, downtown, some of those saloons, um, didn't hold on so well. It's hard to be an uh, alcohol-serving entity when you're not allowed to serve alcohol. <laughs> uh, and breweries didn't necessarily last as long either. So Point decided to serve start selling and making non-alcoholic drinks. So you can thank the prohibition for point beer. <laughs> Green soda. Uh, that's why they bought a van. That's why they bought a van. Yeah, it was good stuff. Uh, but then after the prohibition ended, uh, things started to spark back up. Um, so that's partly why uh, it's able to last 160 years for part of their great ingenuity in figuring out how to direct each other continue that business on hard times. So I have another quote from the artist of this that I'll read and have you think about while we go to our next stop. I want to inspire the people who live there and the visitors alike to really think about the decades of locally grown knowledge, skills, and ingredients that go into a pint of Stevens Point beer. in the community. So the restaurant first opened in 1940 and has continued to be a great place to gather. Uh, but in 1977, there was a fire that destroyed most of uh, the cozy kitchen and left just like the cinder block kitchen. Uh, and then none of the rest of the restaurant. So take a look at that. But it continued after 1977, rebuilt, and continues today. So this mural, uh, this is the one historic mural that was done by a different artist. Uh, this one was done by George Lutke from Custer. So again, my close to home artist. So he went for like a 1950s diner theme in the uh, mural and used uh, people that are regulars of the Cozy Kitchen, uh, people that have worked there for years, and then also some images of people that he found uh, throughout the community. One of the uh, three guys in there that he found a picture of um, in front of the bowling alley that used to be around here, that they came back on leave from World War II um, and decided to go out, go bowling, and have a nice time and there was a picture and he used that as inspiration for putting them in the mural. There's also another picture 
that he found from uh, PJ High School yearbook of uh, the pie baking contest. There's a few years that um, PJ's won the pie baking contest in Wisconsin and there's pictures of it in the yearbook and he used inspiration from that image to put uh, if you can take a look on the cozy specials, um, that is the special food that they have um, during Jodzinski, which, which I mentioned was that uh, Polish harvest festival uh, earlier. And that is the actual handwriting of one of the owners, so that if you go in August to come to the cozy kitchen, that is pretty much exactly what you'll see on their specials board, is what you'll see um, A lot of fun here. Yeah. The iPhone? Yeah, 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 Happy we're we're some of those. Put it together. Mm -hmm. I think that the historical society is trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the future we'll have something. That would be great. You know, All right, so we have another mural to go to. This one's going to be a little bit of a walk. Um, but we'll be up over there. Um, but I just wanted to point out, um, you can see it says the Bell Telephone Building. So a lot of buildings downtown. I can't hear anything. Oh yeah. So I just was pointing out the Bell Telephone Building. Uh, it's not quite a mural, but a lot of our history can be seen in our building. So uh, this building tells you exactly what it originally housed, uh, the telephone company. And it still continues to kind of be a telephone company. It's AT&T now lives in this building. But when you walk around downtown, it's easy to miss some of these things. Um, and that can be in Stevens Point and in any other older town. Um, so as we continue our walk, take a look at some of the buildings and see if you can find anything else that might tell you about uh, the building's past. It used to be a phone booth. Yeah, right, you know, on the side there. For many years. Are you aware that on the side of this next building, right here, there's a mural too? Oh, it's on the corner. It's on the corner. Is it off? Yeah, it's it's just around there. Yeah, and it's, it's the you generations can see it from the that. Before I talk about these murals, I did want to just point out the Hard Rock Mutual building right here. When we were coming in on the top, you could see um, the name of the building as well, which is now Century Insurance. But this mural was completed in um, 2008. Uh, it's the most influential people or citizens of Stevens Point. So the commission who worked on these murals originally had a list of about a hundred names of people that they were thinking about putting on the mural. I worked it down to about 24 people. Then in 2008, there for the um, celebration of the 150th year of Stevens Point. There's a pancake breakfast in early January, and at this breakfast, people got to vote on their, their favorites um, and came up with these top 10 people. Uh, so I'm always curious to like see that 100 list worrying. I would love to know who was on there. But we have these 10 people, uh, and I think they did a pretty good job of picking them out as well. Is anyone familiar with any of these names or know anything about them? I'm sure we've heard some. Was a, a county nurse that did a lot for this community. In fact, the Guilfrey Building is named after her. <coughs> yeah. Let's see. Anyone else? Another person. Schmeekly. Yeah. So there's Fred Schmeekly. Yeah. Schmeekly Reserve, named after him, was a, a 
professor over at um, UWSP and pretty much founded the College of Natural Resources. And Lee Sherman Dreyfus, of course, was, ran, you know, was at the university, was president, and always is famous for his red vest and uh, ran for governor. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They did name the lake the Dreyfus Lake, but it is not Dreyfus Lake anymore. Yeah, so Lake Jonas. Um, so we have John Jonas up there. Mm -hmm. um, he is the head of Century Insurance, had a bunch of different titles there, um, but he was the one that helped create Century Worlds. He's the one that built Big Century World up on the hill over there. Uh, so we've got PJ Jacobs. PJ Jacobs, yep, he's on there as well. Um, so he helped expand um, Century Insurance nationally, so not just local here. And of course, that's yes. the, uh, the convent and started yep. for uh, Polish immigrants, for the children and uh, immigrants coming in. Yes, so her name uh, was Reverend Mother Mary Felicia Janikowski. Um, long name. I read that one off my sheets, <laughs> excuse me. But yes, she was um, really influential on um, that, building the convent. Um, and being Polish herself really helps connect the Polish people. Also on there, we have Jules Iverson, KB Willett, um, Albert G. Ellis, John Bucholtz, and all of them are super important um, and really influential in the community as well. Um, we're gonna move on because we could talk about all of these 10 people for an hour um, instead of doing the whole walk, but I have one more mural I'd like to, like to show all of you. Um, so walk this way. closely at some of our buildings you can see what once was. Can anyone read this faint writing? Billiard, Billiard hall. hall, yeah. Oh. Um, so at one point you can take a guess from this that this building was a billiard hall. What's the name of Mission. Oh, yeah. Mission. Yeah. So sometimes you have to take a pretty hard look. Um, I found this one day going around a few times and have walked down the street um, you know hundreds of times and missed it so if you take a really close look you can see something now when I come down since I've been looking and reading on history I see something new on the buildings each time this looks like we're gonna do Um, it was hired out by the Worth companies. They sell a bait and lure. Um, and they hired out or contracted out a sculpture class over at UWSP. Uh, and that class formed like a little committee and worked on designing and implementing this. Uh, the waves obviously have to do with water and bait and lure. But also kind of represent the Wisconsin River. Uh, it's not complete because there are aims to hang things down from like, the rafters and the wall or the ceiling over there, um, like baits and lure, just shiny things, just to give it like a little more three dimensions um, and make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, but this is what we have right now. So I would like to ask you to make our own mural out of this. I have. These pieces of paper and some crayons. I'm going to ask each of you to draw maybe your favorite memory or your favorite thing about Stevens Point or something that you'd like to see here. And then I have some tape and we'll tape it up together and make our own community mural. So I'll pass out some papers. And then I've got crayons too that we can. What? Put the dog up. Thank you. Yep, on your camera. 
that has some more artwork you can um, do on this mural, and then three other murals that we didn't uh, stop at today. So if you're interested, you can go see if you can find these uh, walking about downtown. Yeah, so if you'd like one, you can take one. Of course. Thank you.